Have you ever wondered that since Luffy is the sun god, then who is the moon to his sun? Could it be his first ever alliance in the new world, which was Law? What if I told you that I have 100% evidence that Law is the actual moon god in One Piece? You may be wondering, there's no way. I thought that would be Blackbeard since he and Luffy are two sides of the same coin. Well, what if I also told you that Luffy and Law are also two sides of the same coin and actually have even more parallels than Luffy and Blackbeard? Beard. Also, there's other hints from Oda which has to do with the Don, the Flamingo, the Five Elders, Law's cryptic name, and real Lunarian lore. By the way, this is the second video to a 5 part One Piece God Valley theory. If you want to see the next 3 parts to this theory when they come out, then feel free to like the video and subscribe with the notification bell turned on. So now without further ado, let's get into it. Logically speaking, I just want to first bring up how I never thought Blackbeard would be the moon god because he's an enemy of the sun god, Luffy. In mythologies, the moon isn't depicted as being an evil thing or an enemy to the sun. It's actually an ally of the sun and they coexist with each other to create the night and day. I mean, the moon even has light from the sun bouncing off of it which lets us see it at night. This makes me believe that the moon god in One Piece would coexist with Luffy and be his friend. Now to explain how laws directly faded with the the dawn of the world. The first major part of this theory is all about what the term dawn means symbolically. The dawn is the first appearance of light before sunrise. So when the dawn comes, the moon is usually still visible and the sun is also about to come up. So all in all, you can think of the dawn as a time in the day when both the moon and the sun are out. There's also another definition of the word dawn, which is the beginning of a phenomenon or period of time, especially one considered favorable. The theory revolves around both definitions so just keep in mind when hearing the next set of evidence. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's put it in One Piece terms. Chapter 601 is called Romance Dawn for the New World. This is a very interesting title because the Straw Hats aren't in the New World during this chapter, nor are they technically heading to the New World yet either. In this chapter, they are getting ready to head to Fishman Island. I believe this title is telling us that there will be a Romance Dawn when the Straw Hats begin their New World journey. Now, let's think about what the Romance Dawn of the New World would actually be. Wouldn't it begin when Luffy actually gets into the new world? So if this is true, then I would assume that the romance dawn began in the first arc of the new world, which is Punk Hazard. Punk Hazard is the beginning of this romance dawn because it's the first arc of the new world and also the arc where Luffy makes an alliance with Law. Or should I say, it's the dawn because it's where the sun god and the moon god make an alliance. And now let me ask you, what's the reason for Law wanting to become an ally of Luffy's. Oh yeah, that's right, to take down Kaido. And doesn't Toki tell the people of Wano that they are the moon unaware of the dawn? If you watched my huge One Piece theory, you will know that Toki is referring to Wano as the moon and the dawn as the era when Luffy and Law saved them. We know Wano and its people are the moon that she was talking about because they are symbolized by a crescent moon. Every clan has a meaning tied to the moon. The word Wano sounds a lot like waning, which is a term to describe the moon's core size. And lastly, Wano's theme, which is played and written by Toki, is called Moon Princess. This song name shows us that she is the Moon Princess, or the Princess of Wano, which is the moon. I think Law being the one to think of this plan to take down Kaido shows us that it's his destiny by the D-Clan to save the moon, since he's the moon god. Just like how it's destiny by the D-Clan that Luffy will come to Wano and bring the dawn. This whole alliance overall was destined to happen because Luffy and Law are carrying the wills of ancient men. With this being said, I don't think Law realized that Wano is the moon or that they were even enslaved, but I think it's more so just a course of fate that the moon god had to take initial action into saving the moon. Luffy or Joy Boy may be the son to actually take down Kaido, but without Law's initial idea to go to Wano, Luffy would have never been able to do it, and therefore the Dawn would have most likely never come to Wano. This truly does show Law's impact and importance in the story. The Dawn that Toki was talking about was when Luffy and Law's alliance came to save them. She knew that they would come because Odin saw at the One Piece that Joy Boy and other primary figures would come and save Wano. Not only are Luffy and Law the two that will bring the dawn to Wano, but also the two that will bring it to the world. They are the only current pirate alliance in the world that is slowly flipping the world upside down. Both Luffy and Law stand next to each other as captains, side by side, in terms of respect, just like the sun and moon. Now Luffy obviously shines brighter than Law since he's the sun, 
Bullard does all the unnoticeable work, like setting up the plans to even go to Wano, or to even take down a celestial dragon. Luffy and Law both look at each other as equals. Luffy relies on Law at times, like when we see Law save his life after Marineford. Was it fate that the only person in the world who could save Luffy at that time was there waiting for him and ended up helping him? I like to think that it may have been. Just like how Luffy relies and was even saved by Law, Law also relies on Luffy and was even saved by him. In Dress Rosa, Luffy saves Law from his biggest enemy. In this arc, we also learn that Law knows a bit about his fate in the world. He may not know about Sun Gods or Moon Gods, but he does know that the D-Clan has a certain destiny to take down the Celestial Dragons. I've also talked about in previous videos how I believe the will of D is the will of the Dawn, since that's the only D word we really see people who found the One Piece bring up. I've also said how Oda told us that romanticism simply means believing or fantasizing in chapter 235. Notice how this chapter has the sun rising or the dawn. If romanticizing means believing and dawn means the air that Luffy and Law are bringing to the world, then romance dawn simply means the belief in the dawn. If that's the case, then the will of D is a clan that believes that the dawn will come one day. It also means that the dawn clan inherited each other's wills for centuries and centuries because they are the ones that will bring the dawn. The dawn comes when the celestial dragons are defeated, which is why Corazon tells Law that those with the will of D are the direct enemies of the gods. You may think, well then what does this have to do with Blackbeard? Well trust me, it all perfectly connects to him as well, but I'll explain his true purpose and how he's also connected to the moon in the next video of this huge mega theory. With everything I just explained, think about it like this, Luffy and Law have an alliance. If the will of D means the will of the dawn, then their alliance is in fact the alliance of the dawn. The alliance of the dawn has both the moon god and the sun god. If you want to even tie it more with the romance dawn, there's an alchemical term that describes exactly what romance dawn is. There's an alchemical term which is called an alchemical wedding. In simple terms, this is a term describing a phase which turns base metals into gold and achieving the philosopher's stone. The ultimate purpose of this is immortality. And by the way, I'm not talking about full metal alchemist right now. I'm talking about lore from real life. I'm not trying to say whether you believe in this or not. All I'm saying is that Oda may have used it as a reference for his pirate story. So now you may ask, well what does this have to do with Luffy and Law? Well, the alchemical wedding is always symbolized by the union, or should I say, the alliance of the sun and the moon. Now, going back to Romance Dawn and how Luffy and Law are creating Romance Dawn, think of the term alchemical wedding. It's a wedding or a union of the sun and the moon. A wedding. Do you get it now? Since weddings are romantic, this is literally Romance Dawn, a marriage or union of the sun and the moon. I know for a fact that Oda had some inspiration off of this term because it's what One Piece is all about. Like I said before, this term describes the phase of achieving the Philosopher's Stone or immortality. Luffy and Law also both symbolize immortality as the sun and moon, but I'll get more into it later. Just remember this term because it's going to be brought back up with another major key point tying it to Lunarians. So now, if you still don't believe that Law is the moon god, God, let's decode his name. Notice how his first name is actually not just Law, but Water Law. Now I think this is a hint by Oda since it's a hidden name that we don't learn about until later in the story. What do you think of when you hear the words Water Law? or Law Water. I personally see it as the Law of the Water. And what is the natural force that brings the Law of Water? Well, it's the Moon. The Moon brings the Law to every single source of water in the world. The Moon is the main cause or force of gravity that creates waves or tides. The Moon's gravitational law creates the Law of Water. Waves are in fact a Law of Water since they appear in every major water source in the world. With this being said, I don't find it a coincidence that Law's name seems to be directly directly tied to the moon just as many other hints. Now this next hint might be a little speculation, but you never know with Oda so I thought to include it. Let's be honest, Law's crew is pretty trash, and the only guy anyone even remembers is Beppo. Beppo as the right hand man to Law is a mink, which is a race of terrestrials that have direct ties to the moon as they become Sulongs on full moon nights. Now this might just be a coincidence but don't worry, because if you still don't believe Law's the moon got to Luffy's son, then you have to hear this next part 
put out because it's the best evidence yet. Luffy and Law are two sides of the same coin. Not only that, but they are even more so than Luffy and Blackbeard. If you take a look at Luffy and Law's backstories, they prove this because they are basically the exact same thing. A kid Law looks up to Corzone. A kid Luffy looks up to Shanks. Corzone stole one of the most important devil fruits in the whole story from the world government and gives it to Law. Shanks steals one of the most important devil fruits in the whole story from the world government and accidentally gives it to Luffy. In Law's backstory, he is saved by Corazon. In Luffy's backstory, he's saved by Shanks. Law ended up being inspired to be just like Corazon, a pirate with connections to the Marines. Luffy ended up being inspired to be just like Shanks, a pirate that fights for his friends. Law ended up getting a tattoo that represents something from the backstory, which is Corazon. He also got a coat that says Corazon on it. Luffy ended up getting the straw hat, which is something that represents his meeting with Shanks. Law's pirate crew name is named after Corazon, since Corazon means hard in Spanish. Luffy's pirate crew name is named after something that Shanks gave him, which is the straw hat. With all these parallels in their backstories, I think it's fair to say that Oda is trying to tell us that Luffy and Law have a connection much deeper than we even realize. I believe all these parallels also prove that Shanks is a celestial dragon, so go check out that video if you're interested. Before we get to the next set of parallels and evidence, please leave a like on the video if you've liked even one thing that I've said so far. Some more parallels has to do with their devil fruits. First of all, as already stated, the world government wanted Law's fruit for themselves and Luffy's as well. Law's fruit seems to be the most important devil fruit in the whole story, along with the Nika fruit, since the price for it is apparently 5 billion berries. Yeah, you heard that right. Not million, but 5 billion. That's more than guys like Shanks, Blackbeard, Big Mom, and Kaido. It's already as much as Whitebeard's and Rogers, which were guys that literally knew what the One Piece is. So apparently, to the world government, Law's Devil Fruit is almost as worth as much as someone who found the true history, the King of the Pirates. Now, if the fruit is this important to the world government, then maybe it is the fruit of a moon god. More actual parallels with the fruits is that specifically Celestial Dragons were the ones who said they wanted it, both Doflamingo and the Five Elders. Another parallel is that both times, the secrets of the Apop Fruit and Gummo Gummo no Nomi were revealed, a celestial dragon was the one who told it. Doflamingo revealed that the Op Op fruit can give someone immortality and is the key to finding the secret treasure of Marijoa. The five elders revealed that the Gummo Gummo no Nomi is actually the human human fruit, model Nika, and has the most ridiculous power in the world. So, since both devil fruits have so many parallels and are both known as the ultimate devil fruits and as having the greatest powers in the world, wouldn't it just make sense that since Luffy carries the will of a sun? god, Law carries the will of a moon god. I even believe that as Law and Luffy fight against Doflamingo, it symbolizes how they will both fight against Emu and bring the dawn. If Law is the moon god, then I believe his fruit will allow him to find the secret treasure at Marijoa. I believe this treasure could be tied to Lunarians because Marijoa is on the red line, which is where they used to live. What if the celestial dragons built Marijoa right on top of where this treasure was hidden in the red line and waited to obtain the moon god's devil fruit to be able Able to use this power. This treasure seems to only work with the fruit itself, according to what Doflamingo says, which is, if I had the Op Op Nomi in my hands that day, I would have been able to use the national treasure of Marijoa to control the world itself. Law's ultimate destiny by the end of the series is to obtain the treasure that the moon gods left at the red line and save the world with it. Just like how Luffy's destiny is to obtain the treasure at Laugh Tail, which was left by the past sun god for the later sun god to obtain and save the world with it. This fate of both the Sun God and Moon God is also brought up by Odin. Odin claims that the primary figures of the Great War that will come one day will split the seas themselves. My interpretation of this is that the Great War will split the seas literally as the Red Line is destroyed. Now, if you've already watched my other videos, you know that Luffy and the One Piece has the power to split the seas since they are going to be the ones that gather up the ancient weapons and destroy the Red Line. If Odin is referring to the Red Line being destroyed, then I'd assume Law's awakening will help this task too. I'd assume that when Law finds the secret treasure of Marijoa, it'll allow him to take down the red line along with Luffy and the ancient weapons. I feel like all of these have to do together and simultaneously or else the red line won't be brought down. Another guy that will probably help out with this is Blackbeard and his devil fruit. In my opinion, all of these abilities have the power to destroy the world in their own right and if they work together, they will literally destroy the old world and bring the world that is in one piece. Anyways, Going back to Law and Luffy being two
two sides of the same coin. They may have the exact same backstories and destinies that coincide with each other, but their personalities are complete opposites, just like how the sun and moon are. Law is a lot like his name. He lays down the law. He tells the Straw Hats what his plan is and that they have to perfectly execute it. Luffy is the complete opposite as he does whatever he wants with no plan whatsoever. I believe both together need to happen to properly bring the dawn. Law's personality is very serious, which is also like his name, Law. The Law is usually a serious thing and Law himself is very serious, quiet, and calm. Luffy on the other hand acts like the sun or like a Leo. He is proud and loud. He is also like his name Luffy which sounds like Laffy. He is always laughing and having fun and at the same time making others laugh as well. Now although their personalities are complete opposites, they still get along since they're both good guys and have similar goals in taking down the Yonko. Just like how I said before, I wouldn't think that the moon god of One Piece would be an enemy of Luffy since the moon isn't an enemy of the sun. I would think that the moon god would actually be an ally or friend and not someone who's evil like Blackbeard. The next hints or connections with Law being the moon god will have to do with mythology from real life. The first parallel is with the Hindu moon god Chandra or also called Soma. This Hindu god Soma is the god of the moon. Now this is very interesting because Soma is also the name for the elixir of life in Hindu mythology. The moon was also thought to be the storehouse of the elixir of life. The legend goes that when the gods drink Soma or the elixir of life, the moon god begins to wane. For the final piece of evidence, I'll be explaining the real life inspirations of Oda's story and we'll start off by asking a few questions, seeing if you can guess the right answer. What is two sides of the same coin based on? What does it have to do with the moon or Lunarians? What inspired Oda to make the moon god fruit, one that can give someone immortality? Why are the moon gods of One Piece portrayed as fallen angels or demons with fire abilities? What one thing in the real world is the inspiration for all these key points? Well, there's only one thing that could have inspired the moon gods of One Piece and it's this, the Baphomet. First off, notice how on the Baphomet, there's literally two crescent moons, one black, one white. These moons symbolize the two sides of the same coin, or what philosophers call symbolization of the equilibrium of opposites. The Baphomet is supposedly perfectly balanced, being half human, half beast, both male and female, and both good and evil. Apparently this image is supposed to represent balance and the goal of perfect social order. So basically the Baphomet symbolizes what we call in One Piece two sides of the same coin. We even see a white and black snake that also symbolize the same thing that's the opposite. We also see a torch on his head or what some call the flame of intelligence. This is another direct parallel with Lunarians because they are known to have fire powers with King even being called King of the Wildfire. With all this being said, now that you know that Oda most likely was inspired by this to create the moon gods, what does it have to do with Law and the op op no well, this term, two sides of the same coin, has a lot to do with the occult and immortality. Remember how before I talked about the alchemical marriage with the sun and moon? Well, this term is one for achieving what they call the philosopher's stone. This stone is known to be able to give you immortality. Doesn't that sound a lot like Lost Devil Fruit? To expand on immortality a bit more, in my opinion, One Piece is a story of the secrets to immortality. Romance Dawn is the alchemical marriage and both the moon god and sun god symbolize immortality. The op op no mi symbolizes it in a way that is physically or earthly, like the physical body being immortal and never being able to die. The sun god symbolizes immortality in the soul and in will. I mean, apparently at the One Piece, you find out that even if you die, you don't actually die. We see Roger literally tell Ray Lee that he's not gonna die. Also, Dr. Kiriluk tells us that people only die when they're forgotten. Is a war of a literal immortal ruler of the world versus an immortal clan. The D clan or the Dawn clan is immortal since they passed on each other's wills for centuries. I can expand more on immortality in One Piece, but that should be for another video because it's getting a little off topic with Law and the Moon Gods. Also, a little detail that may have to do with Law's Devil Fruit and the Baphomet is that Law's fruit is called the Ultimate Devil Fruit. Ultimate Devil 
fruit. It truly does have the ultimate powers of the devil. And going back to Lunarians, wouldn't it just make sense that Emu the Immortal forced a Lunarian to make her immortal since she also lives on top of where they used to live? I also believe the Emerald City has to do with whatever happened to Emu and the Moon Gods since the Emerald City also may have something to do with immortality. With two sides of the same coin, alchemical marriage, and symbolization of the equilibrium of opposites, all representing the key to immortality, there's another phrase that is actually the original, which is, as above, so below. This is a phrase describing the secret to immortality written by Herms Trismegistus on the Emerald Tablets. I believe the Emerald City had the secrets to the Moon Gods because it probably had something to do with immortality and something that's based off of the Emerald Tablets. This all ties in with God Valley, Blackbeard, Rocks, NL, Skypea, Sun God Nika, the Oni race, and more. But that's for the next videos which are on the way. If you enjoyed this video, then please help a guy out and build up the channel by liking, commenting, and sharing it to a friend. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and even hit the bell icon if you want to be notified for the next upcoming videos that are included in this ultimate mega theory. Thanks for watching and please remember to have a great day.